Hello, neighbor. This is Chizuba Katie, and I'm your host. So today we're doing from the call we love. Last week when we did um, Icebreaker by Hannah Grace, I said that we're going to do this one and it's a more intense version of that one. And it's revolving around the world of figure skating. So this story is mostly told from the perspective, POV, of Jasmine, our female lead. And right at the beginning of the story, she's processing at this local complex and it's owned by the local family. But for short, this complex is only called LC, right? So she's practicing here. And the thing is, since she woke up that morning, she's just not been having a good day, right? She even calls it bad because she woke up late. And then when she went to work, she spilled coffee on herself. And then now a move that she used to do so easily, it's not coming to her. Oftentimes when we're having a bad day. We like to do at least one thing we know how to do and do it well. So like our consultant like, yeah, we still got it. But this is not getting it. And Auntie does not want to stop. She, so she just keeps trying it. And she would fall. She'll fall on her thigh. She'll fall on her hip. She'll fall on her legs, on her cheeks. But she did not stop. And the thing is, ice rings feel like concrete ground. So all those bad It is pain. You understand? So the move she's trying to land is called a triple scalouse. So this is how it looks like. Jasmine is 26 years old. And for a figure skater, that's old. The thing about sports like gymnastics, ballet, figure skating, all these flexible exercises is the younger you are, the better. And most of pe- most people who start doing this sport, they register them into it from as early as three years old, four years old. But she started a little later than the others, but still caught up because it came to her naturally. She started at nine years old. However, the thing is, when she started, you know, the whole natural flair for it. It looked like she was going to go so far. But then, number one, she has only won first position one time in her juniors. But like, that's what you call juniors category and then seniors category, yeah? So now, when she was in juniors category, she only won once. But ever since she entered senior category, she's just been getting nonsense. Not even second self. So nobody remembers. But this thing is her dream as far. I want to be a figure skater. I want to win a world championship. Like, what's the point of doing all of this since I was nine? I'm now, I'm 26. And I don't have a world championship to show for it. Or any championship at all. So it's her goal. It's her dream to ultimately get one championship. Jasmine has a loving family. And because she's been, you know, in the past year, she was so focused, like head deep into this figure skating thing. She wasn't paying attention to them. But now that the figure skating thing did not really provide much results, and when her partner left her the previous year, her partner is not a romantic partner. More like there's something um, in figure skating, there's something called a solo skater, like the one person who skates by themselves. And then there's something called pair skating. A girl and a, and, a, and a boy or a man and a woman that skate together. So she had several years passed. She transitioned from solo skating to pair skating. So the guy she used to skate with, Paul, left a year ago, right? And that also added to everything that has not been going well in her life. When that thing happened, it devastated her. And it surprised her that her family, that same family she used to neglect just for the sport, for the sport. They were the ones that rallied around her. And because of their support, she was able to make it out of that situation or making it out because she's in a much better place than she was. So she's currently at this point in her life where she's making more time for her family, spending some time with them, if it's mountain climbing, babysitting this person's kids, exercising with this person, whatever it is it takes to spend time with them, she's doing it. She has like four elder siblings, two girls and two boys. She's a baby of her house, Jasmine. She still did not nail that triple style cows that day. When she's done training on the rink, Jasmine now goes to the locker room to change now so that she can go home. So on her way into the locker room, there were four teenage girls there. Two, t- two out of those four teenage girls, they greeted her. And normally they like her. They see her and they greet her. But the other two girls just did face like they didn't see her. She did not care. She did not send them. She passed. Entered locker room. But she was entered locker room. Those other two girls, I think, with an asset talking to the ones that greeted her as far. Why are you greeting her? That it's not like she has won anything. And my mother said that she's rude. She has a bad attitude. That the judges don't like her. Do you understand that type of thing? Like, as far, she legit has reasons for not having won. You get. So I don't know why she, you people are respecting her. So that girl head. One of the things I really like about Jasmine is the fact that 
she's quite authentic. If it's not gelling with her, it's not gelling. She's not going to come and shine it for you when she doesn't want to shine. Came out, told them off, went back to the locker room. Then another set of teenage girls were like some distance away from her. And then they were talking about something. And then she had a name, Ivan Lukov. Ivan Lukov is a star of LC. This guy, just a few days ago, had just won his third world championship. He's 29 years old. But apparently, news has it that he just played from his two-year-long partner, Mindy. So that means he'll be in it for another partner. Yeah, because this guy is not planning on slowing down or quitting the sport yet. In as much as normally you retire from figure skating for you know by your mid thirties or so or earlier, and Ivan is currently twenty nine and he does not show any signs that he's gonna stop soon. So that means he's going to need a partner. So the girls were like, "Oh, talking. Well, I hope he picks me. Oh my gosh, he's so fine. He's so good." The reason why anyone would want to be paired with Ivan is he wins. No matter who is his partner, the guy makes sure to bring in the medals, bring in the championships. So you kind of want to be around that person, his energy, because you feel, oh, I'm going to win because, of course, he's good. Let's introduce this character, Karina. Karina is Jasmine's um, friend, Jasmine's, Jasmine's best friend, and Ivan's younger sister. And because of Karina, that's why Jasmine started going to Ivan's house from when she was like 13 years old or so. But these people have never gotten along since, like, for how many years now? More than 10 years of knowing each other, 13 years now of knowing each other. They've never gotten along. It's always one thing or the other. And we're going to see it because it's an enemy to lovers. So you have to be in for it. And this one really gave enemies to lovers. So hearing that, oh, he's looking for another partner, she's no reason now because to her, no concern her. But, but still reasoning her life now after hearing them talk about the Ivan person. And her head, she's like, hi, hey, in as much as this figure skating is my passion and dream, seeing as I have not won anything, do I, I think I should quit this thing. But she, it's so hard for her to quit something she's been doing nearly all her life and quit without some kind of medal, something to show for her label. You get. So it's another training day. When her old coach, Galena, saw her practicing. And then the old coach says that the reason why you're not landing all those moves you're used to is because they're distracted, just like you were many years ago. And she knew that her coach, Galena, was referring to when she was 19. That was three seasons after that that time led her from solo to pair skating. Earlier that day, on that earlier that training day, she had also had the where she was stretching at the locker room. She overheard teenagers talking about how Ivan was planning to retire because of the issues he normally has with partners. Jasmine was like, <laughs> that guy, retire. He's not going slow soon. But she just put it out of her mind. So after training, she saw a note on her locker that said, Jasmine, come to the general manager office before you go. She didn't think of it like any big deal because she's gone to the general manager office three times before, you know, based on notes like that. And each of those times, they were offering her um coaching to coach beginners and offer to coach beginners and each time she said no because coaching meant oh i'm giving up on my dreams right i'm retiring and how can she retire when she hasn't even gotten the championship she so wants it's because she knows she's going to go to general manager's office and she's thinking it might take time and she works a part-time job uh, with waitress and job while she's just chasing this thing that's her dream so she called, texted her mom to let her to, to call her boss because her boss is her mom's friend Oh, hey, please, mom, get in touch with my boss so that you'll know I'm going to run late. So mom was like, oh, what's the matter? Do you need any money? And it didn't make Jasmine emotional because for many years, her mother was footing all the figure skating bills. And let me tell you, figure skating bills are not cheap. You understand? Her mother almost went broke because of her. And it's making her so ashamed that she hadn't even won anything to at least show her mother that, yes, oh, your effort was not in vain. So those are all of the things bordering jasmine at this point and she just thinking to herself rather than take one dime from my mother i'd rather do stripping this woman has tried for me the general's manager's office there was a surprise and she does not like surprises the surprise came in form of ivan and his coach coach lee so ivan has gray blue eyes and he was just staring at her like just sit up there you know with his long slim body just staring at her not blinking no emotion she was like creep <laughs> But seeing them there made Jasmine think, maybe I made a mistake. Maybe I wasn't actually called junior manager of hers. Because why are these two here? You understand? 
maybe I interrupted something. So she kind of excused us. I wanted to go. Like, no, 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 no. We're the ones that sent for you. I sent for you to come in. She's not like feeling self conscious because she's thinking, are they about to kick me out of this training faculty? Because to train at a faculty like LC, definitely you pay huge money. And LC basically gives her like 90% discount. Why? Because she's best friends with her younger daughter, Karina. And she's been, they've known her many years, they know her financial situation, just so she can just keep training. So she does, she hardly pays for training there compared to some other people that pay the bulk fee. Do you get? So she's thinking, are they trying to kick me out? Okay. And the thing about these people calling her there, you know, Coach Lee, is that Coach Lee particularly has never been kind, unkind to Jasmine. She's just so dead to her. So why all of a sudden is she looking to speak with her? Because she was like, oh, oh, come out of retirement. And she's like, I was never, I was never in retirement. What are you saying? That she's just looking for a partner. That's her issue. Then the coach was like, okay, okay, fine. You're going to just play, be part, um, Ivan's partner. And she's shocked. She can't, right? Like, is that even possible? Like, Han and Ivan don't like each other. So how can they be partners? At this point, Jasmine and Ivan do not talk to each other. Like, they're trying not to talk to each other. They're just trying to make Coach Lee their middle person because each time they talk to each other, it ends up that one of them insulting the other. No, he, he just had his face straight on. Why right? Coach Lee was the one mostly, just Coach Lee and Jasmine mostly talking. And then Jasmine was just staring at his profile so much. At the point, everyone was like, just take a picture. <laughs> like, I'm more if you just stare like that, just don't bother. Don't worry. Take a picture. Jasmine is uncertain about this whole thing, this whole offer of be Ivan's partner. She thinks it's a prank. I mean, out of all the figure skaters, why do you want to pick me? Then, so the coach, was like, oh, you're talented. You're close in age to Ivan. Instead of him going to pick a teenage girl, better for to pick a girl that's close in age to him. Coach was like, oh, you're skilled. And this is only for a year. Like this um, being Ivan's um, partner thing just for a year. So it's not like a long thing. Coach Lee said that Mindy is just taking a break for it. She's skipping that season. Which means that after a year, where Jasmine stands in for her, Mindy will come back. So hearing this, Jasmine didn't expect to feel disappointed. But that's a feeling she had. However, Jasmine stood a chance of winning with Ivan while well, on this one year, whatever. So, I mean, there is that. That's something that's in it for her if she does this thing with Ivan. So some of the work that Jasmine would need to put in for this one year, she needs to work on her reputation. You know, the whole bad attitude reputation, even though they know it's not entirely that. And then after she's done with the, um, Ivan for that one year, they'll get her another partner. You understand? It's not like, okay, so after you're done with Ivan for that one year, we'll just leave you high and dry. No, they're promising her that, oh, we'll get you a partner. Another reason why Jasmine has been struggling to find a partner is that, that her ex-partner, Paul, the guy slandered her image. He didn't just leave her and abandon her. He slandered her image on his way out. And he just said, oh, she's difficult to work with. And it doesn't help that Jasmine can't pretend. And every action she took after that came out as, oh, this is true. This girl is difficult. This girl has a bad attitude. So Jasmine wants this opportunity. But she had other commitments at this time. You know, those commitments to her family, the one she's taking hikes with, baby she's watching and stuff like that. So she kind of needs time to think, I mean, is this worth it? Is this worth putting my family through pain and everything else? So 12 hours later, Jasmine is at home. She lives with her mom and her mom's husband. This is her mom's fourth marriage, quite literally fourth marriage. So her brother, Jonathan, and his husband, James, comes over. Just take it that way. So James is out of this world handsome. Like that supermodel, ultra, ultra handsome. So oftentimes, Jasmine just looks at James and I'm like, what the heck did you say, my brother? Because this guy is like so tall, so fine. And then her own brother, Jonathan, that he's married to, he's like five feet nine inches. Like, what, what? But Jasmine usually, on days when her brother comes over or, her, or around her family, she's not quiet. She talks a lot. But on this particular day, she's quiet. So that's how her family knows that something is up. But she's denying it. Like, no, everything's fine. Everything, it's okay. She doesn't want to tell them about the whole offer they made her to be Ivan's partner for a year yet. Went through hell because of her. You know, when her partner left, this person was crying. Even her brother was crying. Her mom was, oh my God. So she doesn't want to put her family through that pain again. 
So she doesn't want to say anything just yet. In case if this is really a prank and this is not, mat not going to materialize, they have be the only person who bears a disappointment. Let her know, carry them into it. They all they put her out of depression to the last time. She's able to distract them so that they don't keep asking her about what is it, why is she quiet. Then her mom drops bomb that Lukov split from his partner. She's like, Mom, how do you know all the names? Like, how do moms know all the names? That leads her to talk of how frequently he's changed partners over the years. Apparently, Ivan doesn't work with one person for too long. But despite all of that, he still manages to win nationals, world championships, major presses, you get. So while she's saying all of this, obviously not in any regard to Jasmine. That's what's like, yeah, I mean, a guy who changes multiple partners, he manages to win everything. But look at me, I have nothing. You know, just feeling kind of for herself. Now, they mention, oh, Jasmine, did you have a crush on him? She's like, no, I never did. And she answers this coolly so she doesn't seem affected because if she denies it so abruptly, her family will push. Now, James, the cool one, says, okay, give me facts. Then she now tells them. Something 10 years ago, when Jasmine was 16, Ivan came to practice with his partner for this upcoming, what do you call it, world championship. And... The outfits, like his costume was so ugly. And not just that, it distracted from his dance and everything. But instead of this girl to put this thing in a nice way, you know, package the constructive feedback. What she just came to tell him after his training, and that was the first time they ever even talked, was, you really should change your costume. The guy was like, excuse me? She was like, exactly. <laughs> Uncle basically leaned head and just told her, like, get out. You understand with anger so two weeks later he won the championship he won the world um, his first one world championship and then one week after he won that world championship when he came back to the gym then he now told her like he now told um jasmine that was when she she was still kind of struggling she's still struggling he just told jasmine you might as well quit now you're too old to get anywhere that's so me. like even if we have enemies that is like a really mean thing to say. Then a month later after that, he now told her, is that real third that I'm supposed to be wearing? Because is this size so small or? Because at this point in her life, Jasmine, she don't used to hear wood, that's one. And two, her older sister Ruby likes making costumes. And Jasmine likes to wear, or rather used to wear Ruby's costumes initially when Ruby was not yet good enough in costume designing, just so that her sister wouldn't feel bad. And some of them is not that great. And then that was what um, was his name? Ivan was teasing her about. As far this thing you're wearing, this leotard, you know they wear leotards. Like, is it too small, Abby? What is going on here? <laughs> you know? So her, she was like, you bitch. And then the rest is history. They've just been fighting back and forth, insulting each other every time they see each other, saying mean things. And the worst thing is, you know, Jasmine is his younger sister's best friend. She could have easily involved. Ivan's young sister said, hey, I don't get along well with your younger sister, your brother, what can I do about it? But then the Karina girl found the whole thing funny. As they walk, she was just laughing, laughing, laughing and said, okay. So it was entertainment to her. So she did not bother kind of mediating their relationship so that they would be better. She did not want to not consign her. So by the time that Jasmine finishes telling her family, this Hannah, Ivan's history, they were laughing so hard. And they know that Jas can say things that can provoke somebody. She was like, yeah, we know that you said things they're provoking too. But generally, Jazz is, um, Jasmine's mom thinks he's very nice, he's handsome, he's polite. Jasmine's like, mm, okay. She was like that. How would she work with someone who wants to ask her if she'd been cast for the role of ugly Betty? Like, this is just Jasmine's predicament. Because this person, she's, uh, they're asking us to be partner to. Ah. The history is not good. It's actually not good at all. But later that night, after Jonathan and James left, so her mom, Jasmine and her mom were watching TV when her mom brought it up again. I was like, don't, don't think that I did not know you distracted us. That was a deal. After deflection tactics, you know, again, it did not work. And her mom now asked her, so was it a coaching position you were offered? And Jasmine was like, uh, no, that what they asked me to do. They, um, Coach Lee and Jazz and Ivan asked if I could be his partner for a year, for a season. I was like, mom, I know this is 
this is good, it's a good offer in a way. But mom, what do you think? Do you think I'm good enough for this? Like good enough to be Ivan's partner, good enough to compete. And the reason she asked her mom is her mom's one of those people who would be like, Oh, you're yeah, so good, my daughter. You can do anything. No, my mother is gonna lay it on thick like it is and be like, if your house is going to break, let it start breaking now. <laughs> you understand? So she's that kind of mom. So her mom was like, Are you asking me because you're looking for a compliment? As far, girl. If it's this figure skating thing, you are good, is I are good, you are bad as good. You know? So Jasmine has concerns, basically. Because the last time she was fully into figure skating, she didn't balance it well with her private life. So she's worried that she might make the same mistake. Most of mom tells her, Jasmine, you can do anything you want. You can make it happen. happen. Her mom now says something so profound here that, you know, that I really think that any one of us should keep in mind when we actually when maybe we've been looking for a chance all our lives and then such a great opportunity comes by and we think we should grab it while we can because if we don't we're going to miss it forever her mom makes a really beautiful statement here that really all of us can pick something from what she says is Jas she's like Jasmine I think you should do it but I don't think you should sell yourself short like you should be Ivan's partner for the season because there's no one else he could ask that's better than you even if it's only for a year he's not doing you a favor by asking you're the one doing him the favor do you understand so when people come to you and say hey let's work together on abc girl is they don't do you a favor it's because they're good that they came to you don't think oh my god you may break through set your own time set your own conditions don't let yourself be deep. don't let, like you shouldn't be in a position where you know you let yourself be used because you think me favor so I should bend my back over to accommodate everything they want me to do. Can't do it. So that night Jasmine can't sleep because she's still thinking, should I accept this? Should I not? And the pros of it is oh she misses skating for a purpose. Because lately instead of she's been skating like two hours a day just to keep up the exercise, but she's like, oh skating with a competition in view, that's a purpose and that would be really cool. And also she was skating with a reliable partner. But the cause there is her pride, right? And but besides her pride as well, oh she'll be doing this with Ivan she doesn't like and just for a season, there's nothing else to lose, not really. So since she didn't really she couldn't really sleep, she started her day early. She came to the she came to the complex that morning and she saw Tesla, the Tesla belongs to Ivan, and then the gold Mercedes. The gold Mercedes belongs to Coach Lee. It was already packed there at the ice rink um, parking garage. So that morning, she just skated for, for, she was skating and just, you know, warm up skating. She was doing that for five minutes. When she noticed um, Coach Lee and Ivan on the stands kind of watching her. And then she now finally said, okay, now she's showing off a little, you know, skating, some smooth, really things she could do well, including a move known as a triple loss. And this triple loss is a source of her back pain. It's not an easy move to do, but each time she insists on doing it, it's okay. Well, she wasn't able to nail the triple laws, you know, in the, I'm, I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that laws thing well. But today she nails it well, and she's like, oh, thank God, I think I need it today when I have an audience. I did not go and embarrass my ancestors. So, finished skating early, so that she went to meet them, because she knew they were right there for her. And, you know, she, Coach Lee actually complimented her, and she was surprised. Like, okay, thank you. But she now told them that, hey, okay, well, I have taken your consideration into offer. Remember how, what her mom said? She now told them, oh, I have my own stipulations. She told them that she's not going to be the only person to put in work in this partnership. That Ivan has to put in work too, right? Like if it's something about her, she's not getting along with him, maybe it's temper tantrum or whatever, she'll work on herself. And in return, Ivan has to do the same. You know, that's number one. Then next thing is equal partnership. They both have to work together well. You know, no matter their differences. And number two is they have to find her partner at the end of the season. They come back out on that one. And um, no matter what, they can't drop onto the season as well. They, they can't think, oh, we found someone better in the middle. So they're, they're not to do that. That's our stipulation. Then her deal breaker, really, <laughs> because after everything is said and done, figure skating is expensive, especially when you're competing. So it's like, so how far? How, 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 how much for coaching and choreography fees? Because she knows Ivan's coach, this I, this coach Lee was former world championship at some point. Do you understand? And then Ivan's choreographer is a top class one. So all those things are money. 
So she just had to ask how much first of all. Because in her mind she's like, I'm sure I'm willing to sell my kidney, but after I win the championship first, well they shall know how much we are looking at. Coach Lee was like, Oh, Ivan is going to cover the coaching and choreography fees. My own is to cover your wardrobe and transportation fees. She was like, Okay, I can do it. Then Ivan, <laughs> because he wants to get on her nerves this morning, was like, Well wait, Ivan was like, Well, we can split the choreography and coaching fees if you want. She just for him. No. As far, I'm not going to let my pride even make me say I'm going to pay for something I know I don't have money for. Of course, like, you sure? Because she's like, positive. So they kept going back and forth. She was like, stop. What of you? Stop. Oh my God, is this, is this what I'm going to endure in the next season? Like, separating both of you. I think I'm going to need a race because this is going to be, this is going to work. Then Ivan, after some time, I'm a professional. So you know this kind of thing when someone says something like that in this kind of situation? This girl, what's her name? Jasmine just looked at him like, am I like a professional? Like, we know we don't have the physical description of Ivan and Jasmine. This is the best I came up with. Now, Ivan is described as dark haired, pale blue eyes, you know, those grayish blue eyes thing. And he's really tall. He's like a six feet four inches. While Jasmine is small, dark haired, dark eyes. And she's like a five feet four, five feet five. One of the two. Now that, okay, we've accepted, we're all going to work together. So look at how the workout routine is going to look like. We're practicing six out of seven days a week, four hours at LC, and then three hours elsewhere. So the elsewhere is um, ballet. They have what's like um, figure skating. So moves that some of the skaters make. You, you see how elegant it looks. That requires you have a background in ballet. Ivan does, but our babe, Jasmine, it's not something her mom could afford. Except like um, two group classes a week. That's one one hour each. That was all she got. So she needs more ballet practice to make more elegant moves. Thankfully, Ivan is paying for that. But that's three hours a day, six times a week. That reduced Jasmine's work hours in a day to only four. And that's not enough to make a lot of money to cover her transportation and costume. She was like, I think I'm definitely going to take up stripping part time. I definitely have to because how else can I raise this money? They now ask for one thing from her that oh, they have to get a physical from her to know does she have any concussions or is she in a state of health that means she cannot compete? Let them know before they take a risk on her. Like, okay, go get a physical. I mean, she's had a few concussions in the past, but let's see how it is. Competitions are expensive, so not everybody enters all the competitions. But based on she's partnering with Ivan and he's covering some of those um, costs. Um, babe now had to, Jasmine now asked them, so what am I expecting the season to look like? They were like, okay, Ivan said, okay, we're going to do the Discovery Series, the Major Pricks, the Nationals, and the Waltz. And she now calculated in her head, that's seven different events. Money. <laughs> Money, okay. <laughs> well, anyway, practice that tomorrow. So Ivan now stood up as far to give a handshake as far, yeah, well, let's start working together. She was so hesitant to take his hand because it reminded her of years ago. That was the time she was years ago when she was practicing on the ring and she fell and he happened to be around. A guy skated over to her and brought out her hand. In her mind, oh, he's nice. He Lift me up. Only for her to take, try to take his hand and uncle removed it. So she fell back on her bum bum. <laughs> so remembering that stuff, he was kind of nervous about, like hesitant about taking his hand. Besides now that they're shaking hands and honestly, they're squeezing each other's hand, typical. Like, they even have children. The only other hand, the, the only other time that um, Ivan and Jasmine have held hands is during a Thanksgiving dinner at his house. They happen to be sitting next to each other, so they have to hold each other's hands for prayers. And these two were basically like squeezing each other's hands, like <clears throat> Karina, Ivan's sister, and Jasmine's friend had to kick Ivan under the table as well. Free her hand. What is it? The thing is about you know I am um, this um partnership they're going to do right now in figure skating and figure skating is not required so they're, they're culturally there and the culturally strokes and they'll act so hopefully if they don't talk to each other there'll be no problem the following day they are practicing ivan learning to hold um, what's her name learning to hold jasmine and this is them working together for the first time so it's different from any other person they've been with that's why actually they're even starting training early because like i said this guy just won world championship like less than two weeks ago and he's already back training for the next season it's too soon 
but it's because he's getting a new partner so kind of that need to get to know each other's bodies and stuff so today they are practicing him holding her and they are practicing on you know cushions like um, mattresses they're not so thick but they're not concrete at least you get so from a height of eight or nine inches and eh, uncle you know because he's still getting used to holding her you know accidentally dropped her and she fell and each time it falls you know that whole back pain but she still gets up get, gets on it because they have to learn you know he has to learn to hold her and she has to learn to stay in his grip it's important in this sport by the time both of them finish you know, for that day, Jasmine, her entire stomach was hot in, and she's going to need an ice bath and she has not missed ice bath because apparently, apparently they're painful as heck. Then Ivor and his own arms, they're exhausted and they're, they're both standing barefoot on mat. So now that they're finished, um, she went to put on her socks and her shoes. You know, Jasmine enjoys doing his paint and her toenails. At this moment, they're pink, but they're chipped based on all of the figure skating she's doing. So she's thinking, oh, I don't have any for, for pedicures. I'll, I'll just have to paint this myself. Then, next thing, Ivan spoke to her suddenly. He was like, we need to work on you trusting me if you want me to help you find another partner. So they have this whole, we don't like each other talk. And then she then she, she accuses him like, but you, you dropped me, you dropped me today. And he said he's not deliberate. And then his slick hair is still in place. And she's like, what hair product of this guy is because we basically sweated like how many hours and his hair is still in position. How? Then he now replied something. He said, see, you're hesitating because you don't trust me because of that idiot before me. Notice this guy called Paul idiot. So that means he did not even like Paul. <laughs> so why didn't he like Paul? Is it because Paul was her partner or is there any more reason to this? Because he could have just said because of your partner, your expert. But he just said, I know you're hesitating to trust me because of that idiot before me. <laughs> Let's take note of that because it's going to come back around. It's been hard to say, okay, you're talking about me trusting you, but let me ask you a simple question. In a trust fall, you know trust falls, where somebody will be like, say something and drop, and then somebody behind them will catch them. You get that kind of thing. She now said, Ivan, in a trust fall, would you catch me? Ivan, he's taken to answer. And she's like, see, you can't, you won't. So you can't see why trusting you is not, it's not a question right now. He said, hey, even if I may not, Actually, it was for that's different from our partnership because we, we are both working together to win something. That's not I'm going to drop it deliberately ever. At least not why figure skating is concerned. Ivan now asked Jasmine a question. What do you want from me? Jasmine thought about it and was like, okay. I mean, an icebreaker would be you let's just change silly stories, embarrassing stories. She was like, okay, tell me something embarrassing. He said, no. He didn't even hesitate. She was like, Okay, so yeah, <laughs> like, okay, this is not going to happen today. This trusting, maybe another day, just not today. Tom did not reply. He didn't even reply, see ya. Like, I, I wonder how this dude, these guys are going to do it. Okay. So on the way out, um, Jasmine saw Galena scolding her, her prodigy, rather the girl she's coaching, a teenage girl. And the girl was looking like she was on the verge of tears. So Jasmine just wanted to pass them by because she didn't want to put mouth inside it. Galena was a person who coached that before when she wasn't single, so now she's in pairs. But before um, Jasmine can pass them, Galena complimented Jasmine and said, Oh, so how are you and your new partner going? You know, I had to land at the triple loss. Like, the way she was praising Jasmine in front of the girl, Jasmine knew she wasn't just pra praising her as well. Oh, I want to, you know, pour plenty compliments for you. She was doing that for the sake of the little girl. You know, that her protege, the teenager. So a teenager can know that, oh, this one used to be in your position and this one is very good. So you can be like her if you can just take my coaching, if you can take the one I'm giving you. Do you, get, do you understand? So Jasmine now put Galena aside and Coach Lee told Jasmine that, oh, we spoke to your former coach before Galena, you understand, before we came to approach you. So Jasmine is now curious, like, what did you tell them when they came to you? Galina just was honest and said, oh, I told them, you know, you're coachable, you're hardworking. When Coach Lee asked Galina, would you coach Jasmine again? Galina didn't, uh, didn't hesitate. She was like, yeah, I would. There is her and Ivan. She was honest with them. They would kill each other if they, if they can't talk. But we know it's not possible to work with someone for a long time without both of you talking. So let's see how that's going to happen. So 
let's say if this two ever start stalling ground and how it happens and you know all of the sweet things in between when we eventually get to see them which is not soon but let's continue the next episode thanks for hanging out with me today guys bye